Test, test, hello, hello, test, test. between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but I'll stay till the finish line I've been counting minutes for quite 
Hello?
Hey, dude. Yo. What's up? Meet your audio on stream.
Hello everyone and welcome to the first game of Blue Otter League featuring uh, Imperial Gaming and Conduit Esports. We're getting into draft very quickly here. My name is Jabba2000. I am joined here by Mr. Ryan. Sir, how are you doing today? I'm doing damn well. Thank you so much, Jabba. How are you doing? We're I, I'm just excited to to finally get some some League of Legends under our belt today here. We're jumping in the picks and bands. We've started already. Looks like Ziggs is gonna be the first off the table. Pretty strong in multiple lanes as of this this current patch. Play him a lot in the bot lane. So people are just it, it's too flexible of a pick. Looks like we want to get it off the table. And I'm interested yeah, and, to see and good, the... good riddance. Honestly, yeah, good riddance. This true. champion is a nuisance. I mean, late game, he's chunking out people, doing a ton of damage, throwing those bombs from downtown, destroying towers when they're at like a quarter life. Absolute menace. And then we see on the side of Conduit deciding to ban the Diana. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I believe when I was looking through the scouting reports before today, um, Imperial Gaming has two players that play it. So it's a, it's a mm. mid and jungle pick for them. So it makes sense they want to get it. Uh, a flexible pick and a good pick in both roles off the table. And similarly with the Lee Sin, as we see coming out, not too popular in, in lanes anymore. He had a, a mm -hmm. nerf to his sustain in lane a little bit, but still really good and still really good in the jungle. Uh, so that's, a, that's another good flexible band here from IG. Oh. Yeah, and there you go. You call it. There's the Lee Sin. And in terms of Diana as well, like she got hit a little bit on this patch in terms of her clear speed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I still think that she's an absolute juggernaut. Her clear speed's still pretty fast. Before she was able to get to crab i think she's one of the only junglers that could get to crab at uh at level four do a full clear and reach crab and we see another jungle band come out here jizaba uh zin zhao so lee sin diana and zin zhao all off the table here along with the zigs <laughs> and it's interesting lee sin zin zhao and diana all nerfed on this patch actually like yeah. you said <laughs> they're not they're not too big like you said the the diana clear speed nerfed a little bit because it's the the damage under passive is what got nerfed mm -hmm, uh, lee mm -hmm. sin's um uh, Omni vamp on his W, so he's a little less healthy, but he's still fine. And I don't remember exactly what the Zin Zhao changes were. I think it was something weird, like he has like three less AD or something. Right, like right. So, so a lot of good junglers banned out, and we see the last two bands. I think bot laners, from what I saw in the reports, Seraphine and Varus and Lulu locked in first here for IG. Yeah, and Lulu is an absolutely disgusting pickup. I love the champion. She's so strong. Having that polymorph, having her ultimate, being able to save people or potentially help the engage. The Zin Zhao being banned by Kondo is really good just because Lulu Zin Zhao is a really, really potent combo. Mm -hmm. So it's really good that they're able to ban that out. But still, this Lulu can be flexed into multiple roles, can be flexed into support. We've seen it mid, we've seen it top in some leagues. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes as we see the Leona locked in for Conduit. Yeah, Leona as the answer here. Lulu, actually, another another champion touched by this most recent patch. Not a whole lot. It's like the cooldown on her W and her ultimate that are a little longer now at all ranks, I believe. So the the Lulu enthusiasts out there probably notice it a little more than your average player. But you know, IG saying it's not that big a deal. We'll still pick it up here. And uh, two big frontliners locked in for Conduit in response. Yeah, I love the Trundle pick here. For me, I absolutely think that Trundle is a super strong champion right now. I agree. Uh, we've, we've seen him actually being flexed into support in some regions. Obviously, with them picking Leona, he's not going to be going there, but he can be played top. He can be played jungle. Clear speed isn't the greatest because, of course, he does have that single target damage. But once he picks up that Sheen, he puts out so much damage with that Q. And we see them hovering a Hecarim here. Hecarim Lulu is a pretty potent combo, and it does get locked in. Yes, very good wombo combo there. You can get, get the Hecarim in there, knock everybody up with the Lulu ultimate. Uh, used as like engage rather than peel in this case, if you're putting it on the Hecarim. Um, Trundle, like you were saying, not not the best clear, but uh, also not the best like CC or gank setup. But I like that they they draft the, the Leona in front of it just so they have a little more you know lane Ooh. setup for the ganks for the Trundle. And we have Sivir locking in here to round out the bottom lane for IG. Yeah, and this comp, you might as well call it Sonic because, boy, yeah. they're going to be going Go speed. We got Lulu, go we course. got Hecarim, we got Sivir pressing R. Jabba, this is going to be so much fun. I like the idea. I really like the idea that IG is coming out with here. We'll see if they can actually execute it correctly, but the concept is there. So we see the hover of Viger and Jabba. I actually really like this. The cage is something that's going to be really potent. Of course, the Hecarim is going to want to go in, going to want to engage with the Onslaught of Shadows, and having that cage there is going to be able to deter that. Yeah, it's going to create a lot of... They actually have a lot of space control. They can put down the, the Vigar cage as well as the Trundle Pillar, and Leona just commands a lot of space just 
being a beefy frontliner that could throw her ultimate down. So it's a lot, of, a lot of space control. They're going to have to work to get their engages on IG, I feel like. They do have Hecarim, who can go unstoppable, of course, in his ultimate. Mm -hmm. um, but once mm -hmm. he's out of that, they're going to have a lot of things to be able to throw at him once he lands to make sure he doesn't, you know, get in there and just one-shot carries. He's not, not the greatest at that anymore. That He has received a couple of nerfs. But still really good. Still really tanky. Still does a lot of damage. Uh, we are into the second ban phase here, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of mid laners coming out here. Vigar locked in for Conduit, but then Anivia, LeBlanc, and Cassiopeia looking like it's going to be next on the chopping block. Yeah, and Cassiopeia is actually pretty decent this patch. She did recently get a buff, not in this most recent one, but in the patch before, uh, where her E is actually doing a lot more damage. As we see, the Mordkaiser going to be the final ban here uh, on the side of IG. But the Nivea ban as well as LeBlanc, and I think we've all seen LeBlanc literally one or two shot people. She's an absolute menace this meta. Uh, so I don't mind seeing her come off the table, especially because into a Viger, she can be really potent in terms of just completely bursting him. As we see a Draven hover. Oh, okay, we see a Draven lock in. The Draven Leona Jabba. Yeah, we've, we've actually seen Conduit play this lane matchup uh, in scrims uh, last week or the week before, I believe. And they did very well on it. Uh, they, they, like you said, it's very aggressive. Leona Draven. They want to get in there. They want to fight early, and they have they have the support matchup to be able to do that. So we'll have to see if there's if, if there's going to be any early action. I would suspect that it's in this bottom lane just because of these two picks that we see. Nico mm -hmm. is a champion that IG has played historically and have done pretty well on. So it's another mm -hmm. another big ultimate and uh kind of augmented by the speed that the team has you could yes. kind of like she doesn't have to be super like tricky she could just run in there because she has enough speed so we'll see if we'll be able to get the big pop blossoms and if we'll, we'll see if the akali gets locked in for potentially the top lane you know what as a spectator it's fun to watch akali you know it's fun yes. to see the shrouds it's trying to see the outplays as we see oh, it switch to the j4 okay java i like this so java uh, uh java jarvin actually got buffed he on the did. recent patch and he actually does an insane amount of damage i've seen some people deciding to go lethality i've seen people rushing dust blade and doing a bunch of shenanigans on him that way so this is going to be super super fun as we see the alawi as the last lockhead for conduit Interesting. I, yeah, like you said, he's he was buffed on this most recent patch, and I've been playing a lot of him actually in the jungle just oh, yeah? because you know his his clear is just better now because he does more damage with his passive, uh, and mm -hmm, then it, mm -hmm. his ulti you can really dunk on people because the the AD ratio on that got increased by like five percent or something. So like you were saying, the lethality builds on Jarvan aren't too bad anymore because he gets more scaling. Right. So so I'm I'm interested. It, it might be top lane. We've, we ha we've seen Hecarim in the top lane a non-zero amount of times, so that could be yep, a thing as yep. well. We'll have to we'll have to kind of just wait and see. Yeah, indeed we will, and it looks like both sides are locked in, ready to go. We're going to be touching the rift very shortly, so stay tuned, guys. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are hitting the rift. Stay tuned.
How's it going, everybody? We are back. We are live. We are hitting the rift. Ryan here once again with Jabba, and we are heading into game one of Imperial Gaming versus Conduit Esports. I'm excited to get underway. We had a lot of level one shenanigans and scrims that we were watching, so I'm interested to see what we have today. Looks like just a five point spread for both teams, plus a little bit of dance move. Swaggy showing why his name is such. <laughs> Rocking the cool skin, showing off the moves. And you know, he I'm pretty sure he chose the name Swaggy P based off uh, NBA. I was going to say superstar, definitely not a superstar, not even an all-star, Nick Young. <laughs> goes by the nickname Swaggy P. Let's see if he if his game replicates Swaggy P or if it's better. I like the skin though. The skin's looking nice. Very nice. Taking a look at the runes here, I, we we did get to see. We are seeing the Jarvan top lane for actual bird. He's taking the grasp of the undying. He's going to look to trade a lot with the Alawi. It looks like interestingly, I see here Dark Harvest for the Senna. That maybe means we're going to see the the lethality spam Q build instead of like a normal eighty carry crit build. But we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that one. Yeah, when Sivir has that Dark Harvest, you know she's going to go that le that lethality style. Absolutely chunking with that Q. And it actually gets insanely, ch <laughs> insane damage once she picks up her Strelda's Grudge as well. Oh, yeah. It's just one of those things that is absolutely a menace to deal with because of the slow that it has. As we see Swaggy P starting on his red buff. And we see Kappa Crusader starting on his blue. So just standard bot lane starts, getting a leash as they head into lane. It's going to be same side starts for the junglers, so we could potentially see some fighting around three minutes or so for that top crab. We'll have to wait and see what, what mid lane and top lane priority looks like for the wave push to see if laners can help out with that at all. see a little bit of trading here on the top side. Not too much. Actual bird just trying to get some grass procs going, get that early HP stacking. And in the bottom lane, just some early CSing. Who's going to hit level two first? Just looking at the wave state. Looks like on the side of Conduit Gaming, they're going to hit level 2. Both sides are just playing passive right now. Junglers have crossed over. Scuttle Crab time coming up soon. Ain't easy being cheesy, being cheesy in this bush. They have a ward there, so that they are, they're anticipating IG is some early aggression, so they want to make sure they have vision of the Leona at all times, just to see if they're going to do this. Oh, and here it comes. The Inner Blade lands. The stun lands as well, and as we see Genetics trying to get some chunk down, Really basic trade here, getting that early level 2, just taking some damage off of them. Went pretty well. Ooh, EQ in. Yep, EQ in. As you see, Actual Bird starting to engage on Squig as Swaggy P is coming from the top side. Gets Squig into the wall. Squig has to blow flash as he's walking to the river, but here comes Kappa Crusader. He has the Q, he lands a Q, as well as a TP coming in. They get first blood, and here comes JJH tries to put down the cage. Unfortunately, can't hit. Flash comes out on both sides. As we see Actual Bird not going in, that's actually the clone from his ear fire. Actual Bird trying to get away. Pops the potion, has the Time Warp Tonic being able to heal up a little bit there from using the Corrupting Pot. First blood goes to Conduit. It was it was a really quick uh, collapse from all the laners at that point. It was it was good for Actual Bird to get the engage onto Squig, no, knowing that Swaggy P was just around the corner. Uh, they were able to turn it around, though, uh, Conduit was. Capricator and uh, JJH in the mid lane roaming up very quickly. Swaggy, P, Swaggy P's at it again in the bot lane, it looks like. Yeah, yes he is. And it looks like he's targeting this Draven, but gets stunned by the Leona. I like the disengage, so the gank doesn't really amount to too much. Good poke from Genetics as well. Just taking Swaggy P back to the tower. They have complete vision on him now. They know that he's going to be at his bot side. Looks like he's going to be going to his Krugs. As we see... The Trundle, we see Cap Crusader looking at double crab. Yes, he does get that crab because they were able to win the fight there in the top lane. And instead of instead of going for bottom crab, uh, Swaggy P decided to go for a gank instead. It's kind of the the, the risk reward you take for if you if you see a gank and it doesn't work out, uh, the enemy jungler knows where you are and knows how much time he has to to take those mini objectives like the crabs, like like uh, counter jungling a camp or two. You know those those, those in, integral small advantages that you're gonna pick up in the jungle are gonna start to to kind of stack up here in this game. So we'll have to see if, if Capricorn Crusader is able to make anything out of it. One camp so one leads thing that, so far. 
one thing I'm interested about, Job, I want your opinion on this as a jungler. I wonder how this Hecarim is going to build. I remember before in the past, Hecarim did decide to go tanky. Um, he has. I haven't been seeing him played as much. And of course, against the Trundle, that can steal the tank stats. I'm not sure if he's going to be incentivized to build tank. He might go for a little bit more damage. Not sure if he goes for the Divine Sunder or the Trinity Force. But what type of builds have you been seeing Hecarim's be going these days? Uh, I agree with you that I haven't been seeing it a lot either, but I agree with what you said. Um, Divine Sunder is probably the build just because it's such a good item right now. Um, so I, I would not be surprised to see that. Uh, the the side of um, Conduit, they're not the the tankiest team. I guess he's, he's going to be wanting to dive on the Draven and the, and the Vigar, obviously. So the squishy members, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Triforce. It's just, you know, the, the champions that can build those items can build either Triforce or Divine Sunder. And Divine Thunder, mm -hmm. I think, is just better right now. So that, that that's what I would guess. Um, Gore Drinker, I don't think, is out of the question either, though. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I, if I had to, yep. if I had to put money on it, though, I'd say Divine Thunder. Fair enough, fair enough. And Conduit was able to take that first dragon, that first Infernal Drag, having that full bot prio as well as prio mid, allowing Kappa Crusader to just go down there. It ain't easy being cheesy. Misses that Zenith Blade, unfortunately. As we see a little bit of trading going out, that Lulu shield putting in work, and Draven is a little bit ohm. Can't really continue to chase, so the trading stops there. Trading will stop there. Nothing too too exciting going on at the moment. Uh, JJH did have to burn TP uh, during that earlier fight, so uh, Azure Fire, I think, is, is how I'm going to say it. Has an advantage for now. We'll see if they want to make a play for that at all. Both top laners have TP as well, so... There's a cage going down in the mid lane. Yeah, cage going down in the mid lane. Not really much going to come from it. And one thing that I do notice is that as your fire is actually going the glacial augment, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that ends up playing out. I'm assuming uh, that he's going to be going for that Everfrost as well, trying to get that extra burst of CC. Um, I actually haven't seen glacial augment uh, Nico in a while. I think uh, usually I see them go electrocute. So I feel I feel like that's going to be something. That's going to be really important to keep our eye on as the game goes on. Yeah, I haven't seen that that rune choice too frequently since the new item changes, I feel like, since they got rid of the, the twin shadows and the, the old Hextech squirt gun, whatever that one was called. You had oh, yep, yep. Gauge in the bottom lane, actually. Yep, Xenoblade hey, goes in. <laughs> Nothing much is really going to come from it except for some trading back. He says, you hit me, I hit you. Throws out the Q. Just gets a little bit of chunk onto the bot lane for Conduit. As you see Squid continuing to keep that top lane pressure going, Alawi being an absolute menace, and he's up a pretty decent amount of CS as well. Yeah, speaking of CS leads, genetics in the bottom lane here, both bot laners actually have not backed yet, have very little mana, and they both have their potion, so they're they're kind of playing a, a little game of chicken here down in the bottom lane. Who, who backs first? Because I, I think at this point in the game, whoever backs, well, actually, is it, is it, as you yeah, it's a, it's a big bottom wave for for, ge, for uh, genetics here and ain't easy being cheesy. So it looks like they're gonna push that one in and back now that they they know they have a timing. So they're gonna be the first ones back with that 15 CS lead. Uh, not a cash in for the Draven yet, but is still ahead in gold. So he'll go back. We'll get Moby boots actually out of ain't easy being cheesy oh. right off the bat. So looking to potentially roam here early in the game. I love that. I love that pickup. Let's get some agency around the map. Let's get some action going. Take advantage of this Leona pick as we see a cage come out. Not really much that he could do here. Does get to land the W as well as the Q for some nice poke. Get to Jir fire down a little bit to about a quarter HP, but he's going to chug some potions. He's going to chug a crafting pot and restore that back up. As you see a roam, looks like they might be going for Rift Herald play. Ward does go down onto Rift Herald. As you see Draven as well walking down mid. So I wonder, are they going to commit for this? Yeah, we saw the Moby boots out of Leona, so we expected her to roam, but uh, genetics on the Draven here is catching mid wave too. So they, they, they had a plan ahead of time. It looks like Conduit Gaming does, is in that they wanted to rotate bot lane up for sure, have numbers advantage on this Rift Hailed. IG looks like they maybe want to respond, but no, they're they're going back to, towards mid lane now. They're gonna understand that Conduit has the numbers advantage earlier, so they're gonna give it up, get the waves. Um, they're going to give a lot of free time to how I met your table down in the bottom lane. So <laughs> they, they haven't quite crashed the, the wave into the tower yet. And Conduit is on the way. So they're not going to get that much free time on the tower to get plates. So it's, it's actually a really good rotation, I think, from, from Conduit. They were able yeah. to push in waves, rotate up, 
Oh, and getting engaged. Oh, but Solar Flare comes out as well as the Flash. Spell Shield is down. He gets a stun. And here comes Draven. Is Draven going to be able to cash in? He picks up his Ash, but here comes Swaggy P. And he comes charging in. Fleeing is Leona going into the team. He pushes in. Ain't easy being cheesy into him. And how I met your table sets up the table and picks up the kill. Genetics trying to get out, trying to flash, but it Swaggy P, it doesn't matter. He gets the kill. As suppose well we see the TP from JJH, and he immediately has to go back to his tower as we see two kills from Imperial come their way. Yeah, it looked like a pretty good engage out of Ain't Easy Being Cheesy. They were there in time to stop the push onto the plates. Um, but like you said, Swaggy P swagging on in, used the ghost as well. There's a fight Ooh, in the bottom lane. a little lane. bit of chunk coming, wow. and he gets absolutely dunked, but the Flash can squig get away. Oh, he actually just dropped the flag on his head top, and he goes down. Kappa Crusader was actually looking for a potential dive play, but they just didn't execute it fast enough. And it looks like Imperial's going to be able to take this second drag here, the first drag for them. And we'll be able to see what type of soul we're going to get here. Is it going to be an ocean, or is it going to be an air? Wait and see here as it goes down. Cloud Soul is up for this okay. game. We have Rift Herald summoned in the mid lane. Azure yeah, Fire's a little out of position here. Yeah, and Oom as well, starting to get chunked out. We see the Vire Cage come out as well. And there's Swaggy P getting absolutely blown up. JJH doing Vagar things, and it's still early in this game. Only has 70 CS, so he's going to become an absolute beast as he continues to stack up that Q. Good stuff. I really like the catch there. It sucks because Swaggy P was coming to try to save Azure Fire, and he ended up getting... Killed, but as you see, Azure Fire trading onto JJH, noticing that he has no mana, trying to juke out the Q. He ends up having a flash. I like it. Good, uh, good patience for Azure Fire, holding onto his E, knowing that JJH was trying to dodge it out, and then at the last moment gets his flash. Really good patience from Azure Fire. You could see him like walking back and forth in front of the the jungle wall. There, he was trying to anticipate the abilities, and Azure Fire is like. Okay, I could just like stand here and auto you. So he's, that's exactly what he does. Nico does a lot of damage with her auto attacks. The the passive yeah. on her on her cloak, her clone ability, every third auto it does a bunch of damage. So he was totally content with just sitting there hitting him in the face and not and then you know holding it until the very last moment. And it was a good flash by JJH to make sure he didn't die. But you know, good Nico plays there knowing that he didn't need to commit an ability until he absolutely had to, and he gets a flash for it. So good on him. Yeah, and Job, I feel like. Dragons are going to be extremely important this game, uh, just because we already talked about in the draft how they are running a Sonic comp. And I think for IG, this Cloud Soul is going to be extremely important because having that extra movement speed is going to allow them to make their picks even more potent speaking with that Silver R. Yeah, speaking of move speed, we see... Oh, nice disengage, but it doesn't even matter. Genetics getting chunked out. Can't quite land the ult as Genetics gets absolutely blown up and How I Met Your Table picks up another kill in the bot lane. So it looks like the Sivir's starting to scale up, starting to get ahead. Up, no, actually not up CS, but oh, as we see another fight coming out in the mid lane as a quick disengage from JJH, ultimate whiffs on the side of Azure Fire. It's not going to find much. Now I wonder, are they going to try to look at this Leona here? Maybe not as Kappa Crusader is coming into the mid lane. Cage comes out. Azure Fire is going to have to stay. And here comes a TP as Kappa Crusader easily picks up the kill. TP is still coming out. And here's Actual Bird. Is he just going to disengage? Yes, he does because Squig matches the TP. So good stuff. TP for TP. Kill on the side of Kappa Crusader. Really good setup from the cage from JJH. And it looks like they might actually do something here as the cage comes down. The ultimate comes down. But Actual Bird is actually way too tanky. It looks like they're just going to pick up some plates here. Oh, his actual bird goes back in, dunks up to JJH. There's Squig trying to keep the fight going. Actual bird takes down the Vagar, and here comes a Hecarim as well as he gets absolutely annihilated from Squig. Squig ends up falling due to the tower, and here comes another TP as Capra Crusader says, this is Thanksgiving, another dinner plate, and as your fire is keeping the fighting going. When is the fighting going to stop? Is it ever going to end? As Capra Crusader takes a chunk, uses the pillar, about to take another chunk, tries to get one more auto, does, and he falls to your fire. What a bloodbath, Jabba. What a bloodbath. It looked like he was going to be really good. <laughs> Kappa Crusader went a bit deep underneath the tower. It, it looked like he was actually going to be going to make it out, but it was a really good route at the very end by Azure, by Azure Fire to make sure he's 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 going to die. He knows it, but he at least makes sure Kappa Crusader's stuck underneath the tower. So he gets one back after that. But yeah, there's a lot of blood already in this game. We have what 13 kills in 12 minutes, or I'm sorry, 14 minutes. So almost a kill a minute. Um, I I kind of. 
was waiting to see if this was going to be like a mirror of what we saw in scrims there was all the scrim games that we got a chance to watch were always super bloody and there was always way more kills per minute uh in all of the games that we saw so i'm glad we get to see you know the teams aren't nervous now that we're officially at the start of the league here the the blue otter league officially in league games um no one's holding back and i and i think that's awesome we're getting to see uh players play at the level that they're used to no nerves no nothing like that so i'm, I'm glad to see it we are 15 exactly. minutes into the game here. We might have a play here around the next dragon. It is coming up very soon. Yeah, and we already touched on it a little bit, how important this Cloud Soul is going to be. I think both sides want it, right? IG wants it because it's really good for their comp. But then in terms of Conduit, they want to make sure that IG doesn't get it, of course, right? So we're going to see a lot of fights come down here for every single dragon. Is Cap Crusader looking to come in but gets rooted up from Azure Fire? Not much going to come from him. Now, remember, both top laners don't have TP. So if a fight does break out down here, it's going to be 4v4. Mm -hmm. No TPs for anybody, actually, except for JJH. It's coming up very, very soon. You can see that cooldown about to tick up. So he will have it, and that is it. Um, looking around at the other summoner spells, almost everyone has their sums. Uh, Hecarim's missing ghosts, and then JJH's flash is still on cooldown for a little bit. So if there's going to be a fight here for this dragon, it just spawned. It's going to be an explosive one. All sums are up, and there's a lot of people down near this dragon pit. Yeah, and so they were able to get the mid push on the side of Conduit, so it looks like they're going to be able to start it up. But here comes Hecarim as he goes in, as the cage comes out, and oh my goodness, Genetics gets an absolute disgusting kill on him. Ain't easy being cheesy, taking up a little bit of damage, and I don't think IG can do anything here. I think they're just going to have to concede. They get the dragon, there goes the cage. The cage actually whiffs. Nice pillar from Kappa Crusader. He's going to keep going in. As your fire actually goes in and gets a three-man rule. Absolutely disgusting, trying to turn the fight around. Genetics, one hit being dead the silver Q cannot land ain't easy being cheesy trying to be a god and actually saves them with the stun and uh oh spell shield not able to come out flash actually comes back in ain't easy being cheesy actually hits the zenith blade everfrost comes out e comes out and the silver goes down what an amazing turn from conduit esports you love to see it you love to see it they got the drake they got a really good pick on swaggy p actually he went a little deep with that that onslaught of shadows. He, he, I don't think he actually hit anybody with the fear, which is bad. And then he was just in the middle of four people, and you saw Janags actually just like two tapped him with the the spinning axes. He died right yep. away. The fight was already pretty much won for Conduit at that point. They were able to get the dragon. Obviously, no jungle contest, but like you said, a fight afterwards completely went in their favor. So they're they're doing very well. It's still only about a two thousand gold lead because uh, everyone is farming pretty well on the side of IG. But yeah. Two dragons to one. Uh, Draven's doing well. Alawi's been really good in team fights, and we haven't even seen like true five v fives yet. So I'm I'm interested. I'm eager to see how this the rest of the game goes. Uh, looking around at the items here now that we have a bit of a break. It was Divine Sunderer here for Hecarim as he's looking to use uh -oh. it, actually. Yeah, and here comes the dunk, and there it goes as Kappa Crusader falls down. Looks like he was getting a little bit greedy there. They have complete control of the top side. They're able to take the Scuttle Crab. It looks like they're going to start up the Rift Herald. And uh, Jabba, I just want to say, this Viker's going to continue to keep scaling up. I actually think he was a really big MVP in that fight just now against the Dragon. Able to get the cage. Able to actually make it so IG couldn't back up the Hecarim dive. It was deep, but because of that cage, they weren't able to really engage. As JJH gets hit by the Everfrost, he uses his Everfrost. And oh, look, oh my, my goodness! He gets absolutely exploded as we go to the bot lane. And is I'm how I met your table going to get absolutely exploded? Uh, fortunately, he's not. Or I should say, fortunately for him, he is not. And he's able to stay alive. But oh my goodness, Java, I was just talking about the <laughs> Viagra. I was going to say he's scaling up. He's getting strong. And it looks like he's already hit that boiling point. Yeah, he's got level 2 ultimate. You see there, level 12. I believe tied for the highest in the game right now. Yeah, and he just JJ is just outplays him with one button there. It's, it was it was very good. He he did land the Everfrost just raw without the cage at the start of that fight. So good on him. Gets mm -hmm. that skill shot. Makes the rest of the kit super easy to land, of course. So gets gets that one v one kill. Looks like we're gonna have a maybe set up for a dive here in the bottom lane. Both junglers yeah, are nearby. Yeah, I would nearby. love to see live. And here we see Capital Crusader actually going Swaggy P. Teleports coming out. Swaggy P actually having to use the ult to disengage. As we see the subjugate actually Draven. putting in so much work. Draven trying to do some damage there on the backside. We see another TP coming down. How are they gonna play this out? They have no wave. The wave is actually just coming in now. They're on the wrong side of the rift. And it looks like they're just gonna disengage here, pick up the red buff. Capital Crusader is. They just pick up the kill. 
I was gonna get real nervous if they were like gonna five man dive like, uh, underneath this butt lane tower. It was like they were <laughs> there were five before, but it's still fairly early in the game. No one's super tanky yet, so mm -hmm. it, it, if they would have done it and pulled it off, I, I just would have had it. I would have had to tip my fedora. That would have been an, ama <laughs> an amazing early game. Not early game. Oh, early early mid gameplay. Let's take but... a look here. Solar flare comes out. Ain't easy being cheesy, but it's easy to hit the solar flare as the stun comes out. The wild growth doesn't even matter as genetics. Oh, actually, ain't easy being cheesy. Cancel that one. I'd be a little bit salty, but it doesn't matter. He set up the kill. He can take it. Why not? As Kappa Crusader speeds up and says, you want to play Sonic? I will too. But as your fire actually tries to disengage here, get a little cheeky with the clone as JJ8 says, oh, oh he's gonna how's it going, my again. friend? The Everfrost is done and Crapper Crusader says, Chomp! Chomps him, takes the kill, and another one goes to Conduit Gaming. A lot of really good uh, rotations just around the map. They they were <laughs> going to set up that cheeky five-man. They decided against it, but they still get to make plays in the bot side of the jungle here. Genetics has Ooh. no fear against this horse. What a bully. He does what a lot an of damage. Bully. Wow. I mean, if that's not Chad, I don't know what is. We see the Draven. Sorry, we see the Trundle just stepping behind the tower saying, you know what, this is my territory now. You want to step up, you die. And it looks like they're going to be able to try and pressure that bot tower and get that down. Gwig just doing some basic training. Trading. He is up. Or sorry, down a little bit in CS. But it's not going to matter too much here. Yeah, this this bottom quadrant of the jungle for IG actually isn't theirs right now. There's, oh. there's too many conduit members in it. <laughs> How I Met Your Table. Uh, barely escaping with his life if the, the cage lands there. He didn't... Like, JJH didn't even have ultimate at that point. He has it up now. But I, I think he was dead either way there if that cage hits him, so... Uh, yeah. I actually do drop the Rift Herald in mid lane. I didn't quite see what the HP was on it. It gets pretty low off the charge. I don't know if they'll get the full thing, but it's at least a little bit of standing money that they can get in the near future, kind of try to shore up this lead. It's ballooned to about a 5k gold lead at this point in the game here. And Kondu is going to pick up the third dragon for themselves and put themselves on soul point. So going into into the mid game here, Kondu, it looks like they are in commanding game of the game so far. Yeah, you love to see it, especially as we touched on with this drag being so important and them taking it out. As we see actual bird getting chunked out here, it's going to have to disengage it because Squig is just like, I'm an absolute beast. And hold on, the slow comes out. Now, will he fall to it? The flash, he he actually flag it drags over the Baron pit and there's Swaggy P to be a bodyguard just in case. And he gets out. And it's funny, Jalo, because actual bird was the one that started the fight. Yes, he was. It was, it was actually... A, a small thing that I don't think a lot of people would notice, if he would have flagged and dragged over the wall and hit the Baron, the Baron would have just hit him and he died. So I don't know if he tried to, like, space it. So he got over the wall but didn't actually hit Baron. Yeah. So, so he lived. So that, that was good if he did that on purpose. It was not a whole lot of people would think in that stressful moment, oh, crap, I got to get out, but I got to get out right. so the Baron doesn't kill me. Uh, so, so good on him. It's unfortunate that he started the play and then ended up needing the flash and... Actually, no, he didn't flash. Um, Squig did to try and finish the kill. So, yes. on to get out without using flash. So, But that does mean that Squig does get some free time on this tower. And uh, the rest of Conduit are going to push their vision into that quadrant of the jungle to set up for a possible early Baron, Baron take. Yeah, that top tower looks like it's going to drop here. How I'm at your table clearing out some vision as Capital Crusader engages onto Swaggy P. Swaggy P's going to have to get out as Actual Bird dunks down. And here comes Azure Fire and the Lowey all comes down. Oh. oh my goodness! Gets the one for one. You love to see it as Capital Crusader in a little bit of a scary spot. He flashes in trying to finish off Swaggy P, but the heal comes out and Swaggy P's able to take the kill. Unfortunate stuff for Conduit. <laughs> They're a little going a little ham there. They, they have a lot of vision in the jungle, but. There's just more people there on the side of IG, so it, it was good for Squig to, you know, get that, what, it was a 1v1 and a 1v4 or 5, something like that, so could have been worse. They lose that pressure that we, we said they were getting in that top side of the map. They kind of lose it now because IG is able to get those kills, push the waves out, and get a little bit of vision. Um, by the uh, of their own in that quadrant so they can at least walk in a little bit more safe but while all that was happening genetic was in the bottom lane on draven you see that cs lead growing around 30 or so now so uh draven very strong vigar very strong uh and the, these frontliners for conduit are gonna be able to soak up a lot of damage in this next team fight now we see the serpent's fang actually coming out for actual bird on the jarvin so he does pick up a little bit of lethality here in terms of shielding, the Draven obviously having shield both Derek's Gage, both on Alawi as well as Trundle. So I guess for him, he has the mindset of, I want to be able to try to reduce these shields a little bit. Lock it on Leona as well. 
Yes, yeah, good point. Thanks for pointing that out. The 100%, the locket is something that's very important. So I feel like he might get a little bit of value off that. But then, of course, Sivir as well. Going that does play build that we mentioned. So we'll see if she actually wants to pick up uh, one as well. But I guess, I, I'm not sure. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, Job. But uh, I think it's less shielding reduced on range targets, right? If range uh, champions are applying it. You're saying if um, Sivir were to get a Serpent's Fang? I believe that yes. is correct. Yeah, because there's, okay. oh, there's a lot of things in the game that, that have that. So I would not be surprised if that applies to Serpent's Fang as well. Um, <laughs> Conduit is just like setting up an entire apartment complex inside IG's jungle right now. They're just walking in, putting down vision. They, they really don't care that it's not their side of the map. Uh, they have, they're strong enough to do so. They have the gold lead and setting up this vision early for their potential, uh, dragon soul is, is very good map awareness and game state, you know, knowledge. They have, um, when they were doing that, they had 90 seconds or so up before the dragon spawned. Oh, but so I can be trying to go win, but there's a Vayner cage. Oh, we talked about how much value my. it was going to bring. And JJH says goodbye, good night, and you are dead. That was uh, that was Vigar doing his thing. <laughs> <laughs> what an absolute disgusting champion! I really love that pick, honestly, Vigar. And you know what's crazy? Vigar plus Hecarim is actually a very potent combo as well. As we see the cage come out, they're trying to just get that tower. But yeah, uh, it's actually a very potent combo because a Hecarim can actually push the enemy into, into the cage the wall, and get yep. this done that way. Yeah, but it's also really good against him because he only has one direction, wants to go in. As you see, Flag and Drag, Actual Bird getting out. Good pillar placement from Kappa Crusader. He gets away with his life as Dragon's going to be up. Remember, this is going to be sole point job before yeah. Conduit. So it's going to be an interesting fight coming up. Yeah, they're doing very well, you know. They don't need to worry about a potential dragon steal if they push IG all the way out of the jungle into their base. So like, like <laughs> that's what they're doing. They have so much vision in this side of the jungle. There's no way that IG can walk in like near the dragon without you know conduit knowing about it. They're deciding to instead make a look at the Baron. I don't know if this is the best mm -hmm. call. They know they can't get the dragon, so they're trying to look to make a cross map play anyways. Uh, because of conduit having all the vision on the bot side, they don't have it on the top side. So we'll see. Yeah, and looks like Swaggy P actually had to use ult because Ain't Easy being cheesy was able to land some CC, and if not, the cage would have came out. So that ultimate, ultimately, <laughs> no fun intended, going down, <laughs> and the Dragon Souls picked up for Conduit. Yeah, it was a, it was a good try, I think, but Conduit was good to recognize that they weren't coming for the dragon and they they had a ward on the entrance that walks towards the Baron. You can see it uh, on your screen now, kind of. Uh, IG's top side jungle, they have some wards there now. They saw IG walking that way, so instead of, you know, dogpiling the dragon, everybody except for Kappa Crusader went towards the Baron, so they were able to, you know, get that ultimate out of the Hecarim, and Easy Bean Cheesy was there earlier than I think they anticipated because they thought they were going to go for the dragon. So good on them to, you know, take their objective and also stop the opponent's play, which is really hard to do in League. Obviously, you, you only have so much time to do things. You only have so many people to, you know, allocate across the map, and they did it well there. We see some CSing going on for Actual Bird, just trying to pick up this wave here. As IG just trying to get what they can. Side on their map is a little bit in shambles. As now in the mid lane, it's just the in inhib turret that stands. Yeah. And it looks like. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like like Conduit was doing on the bot side of the map for the dragon, since it's gone, Baron's oh. the only thing on the table. So they're they're moving into this side of the jungle now with a lot of wars. They're doing a great job with their ward placement, just covering every entrance. They know where they're going to be coming from, and they feel confident enough to start up this Baron 30, 28 and a half minutes in. Looks like they might peel off and fight instead. Oh, and Actual Bird actually has to flash the Vigar Kate. So absolutely amazing zoning here. Baron already down to half. Are they going to look to turn? Everfrost comes out. JJH being an absolute chat, just zoning them off. They're not even able to step up as the cage actually hits, as the Zenith Blade actually hits. And JJH, once again, the outplay button. He presses R, you die. That's what happens. The genetic picks up the Jarvan as your fire gets stunned up, and he goes down. Double kill for JJH. That's two Jades in his name for two kills that he just picked up. And just like that, they get the Baron, they pick up a couple kills, three kills at that, they're feeling good. They have money in their pocket to spend. Money in their pocket, Dragon Soul and Baron Buff oh. acquired. Squig is feeling himself. 
Oh, man. You know what? I always say this about Squig, man. He is a Chad. He is not afraid to make plays. Sometimes it might look a little bit int. Sometimes you might be saying, Squig, what you doing? But there's a method to his madness as they're able to take down this inhib tower. And it looks like they're going to push to take the inhib as well. They do have three dead, but Swaggy P is coming up now. So making the, the conservative decision to maybe push out some other lanes, take a Baron reset and buy. I'm sure they have a lot of money in their pockets right now. If we toggle the gold. Yeah, two and a half thousand gold on Draven right now. So he's going to pick up probably a full item, whatever that BF sword is going to go into. Um, yeah, Conduit and command and control of this game now. What, 11,000 gold in the leads, seven kills ahead. The only thing we really have to worry about is Elder Dragon in uh, 2 minutes, 45 seconds. But Conduit's going to look to push out some waves, it looks like, first. Um, Squig's TP is up, so they could look to 4-1 with him if they wanted. Their team fight is just, like, so good, though. Like, they, they could death fall around the map, and I don't think IG has a good answer for it, except for having Azure Fire split push, which is what he was doing during that Baron kind of dance before he teleported. So, can't teleport now. They could switch and have actual bird split push if they wanted. Uh, I don't think he wins a 1v1 against anybody, though, so we'll have to wait and see what IG decides to do here during this Baron buff. And now take a look at JJH Java. Six, one, and six. Decap, Everfrost, Zonia's working towards a Void Staff. My goodness. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he got two sticks and made them into a hat. Now he's now he's, he's very, very strong. 217 CS has has that uh, that shutdown as well. Genetics has mm -hmm. shut down on the Draven as well. He did finish that Bloodthirster on that last back. That's not the real Nico. But... Yeah, they knew. They knew. They're like, ah, there's no way that he's going to run right past us. It's got to be the Shadow Clone. And we can see here Conduit doing that 4-1. It looks like uh, Kappa Crusader is going to get the last mid-wave pushing here. And then I would expect him to run towards either side of the map with his team. Actual Bird a little oh. caught out. Can't EQ yeah, out of that. Yeah, he is caught out. And it doesn't even matter. Actual Bird not having any magic res resist at oh. all. Gets absolutely sure as as your fire goes in. Able to land the root onto two. Sivir able to pick it up. That's how I met your table. And is this how he's going to meet a kill onto JJH and get the shutdown? Yes, it is. They shut down the shutdown, base. but the base. Yeah, the base is in absolute shambles. Kappa Crusader says, Kappa, it was a joke. You thought we were fighting you, but we're taking your base. As the Zenith Blade goes out, Rin is going to have to back up. And it looks like they're just going to take the Nexus Jabba. They're going to push in forward. It's going to be really close, but they're able to... to kill it in the end squig gets the kill you see at the end of his name it's two g's for gg game one okay. goes over to conduit esports good stuff i mean is it just a macro diff or what you know ig took that fight in the bot lane squig was already shoving that top lane the entire time the team rotates kappa crusader we all know trundle is a champion that absolutely demolishes towers and that's what he did good follow from ain't easy being cheesy and they were able to take game number one conduit Versus IG. It, it was pretty pretty close in the early game, and and uh, Sivir actually ended up doing a lot of damage in that game. But you know who did Ooh. more? Of course, the Vigar did. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Viger ban, especially if they are going to continue to put high priority on this Hecarim. They literally just can't play into it. It's it's too strong of a pick. So if they do want to play the Hecarim again, I'm expecting they're going to have to take away that champion from JJ. It, it was a really good pick. They they saw with their first three picks, it was a go fast run at you comp, and you can't mm -hmm. you can't run at Vigar. It's it's just too hard. So it, you know it's obviously you can try and play around the cooldown, bait it out. But if it's a good Vigar player, they're going to know that and they're going to place it well. And he did throughout a lot of that game it was a fairly good engage from ig to get kind of in behind conduit as they were sieging that bot lane tower um mm -hmm. but as you saw the rest of the members were so far ahead that they were able to just barrel down mid squig ran through the top lane tower didn't even kill it because Gabba crusader <laughs> had had the wave at their nexus already so they were able to it was good on the the members in the bottom lane to they got a kill or two i think to make the defense even harder so good good heads up shot call there by whoever made it to to go for the base since they were going to use so many resources there in the bottom lane so uh it was, it was exciting it was a good game i'm excited to see what the rest can bring here yeah most definitely especially because again that bot lane to Draven Leona, they never really had a lot of action early. Typically, Draven Leona is a lane that really wants to snowball ahead. But if you're playing that bot lane, if you're genetics and if you're ain't easy being cheesy, you're loving it because you're like, I right, top lane and mid are doing absolutely well. We could just sit back, not die, and let them carry the game for us. But with that being said, game number one is in the books. Conduit 
taking a pretty commanding lead, commanding win. They are up 1-0. and oh. Are they going to be able to close it out 2-0? Or is it going to go to three games? Find out. Stay tuned. We ain't going anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be headed into the draft for game two. See you soon. What if I go stronger? What if I get higher? What if I start doing things I know I will regret? I will make my own way. I will not surrender. I will do my best until I get put under. Thank you. 
Hello everyone and welcome back. Jabba 2000 here again with Mr. Ryan. We're in Yes sir. We're in Champ Select already for game 2. Conduit versus Imperial Gaming. Conduit now on blue side and we see a couple familiar bands from game 1, Diana Zinzao Ziggs, but Vigar now joining the bandwagon mm -hmm. as well. And IG actually decides to ban out the Lulu as well on their end. Var is banned out and Conduit like we said, Diana Zinzao. So standard stuff, but the Viger ban is one that stands out. JJH is definitely the MVP of that game. And this makes me think that maybe IG wants to go for a Hecarim again, or maybe they just don't want to play around the Viger cage, period. Yeah, they had, when I was looking at the scouting report, they had been playing a lot of Hecarim uh, just in practice. So that might have been a pick they wanted to have prepared for today. And the Viger is going to obviously continue to throw a wrench in that. So... Uh, another champion that does throw a wrench in engages is Leona. So Conduit in easy being cheesy, picking that one up again. He's he's known for the aggressive supports like we've seen in the scrims that we have been uh, a part of. He likes his hook champions. He likes his Blitzcrank and his Nautilus. Uh, and as mm -hmm. we've seen, his uh, his Leona is nothing to scoff at as well. Uh, a, a different engaged champion perhaps in Nocturne here for IG. Ooh, so the Nocturne gets locked in. I wonder what they're going to pair it with. Um... You've seen things like Shen, other champions that have global ults like Galio get picked up Twisted when Nocturne fate, gets locked Twisted in. Twisted Fate, Nocturne mm -hmm. is nutty because you turn off the lights and you can see everybody. So Right, right. I don't know how good Twisted Fate is meta-wise. That's more of a team pick than a lane pick, I would guess. But Ash mm -hmm. coming out here, not something that I personally see a whole lot of, but I feel like she's not bad. Yeah, I definitely don't think she's too bad. Uh, I'm wondering what IG is uh, planning here in terms of their idea of their team comp. Uh, I guess, obviously, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow coming up from the Ash is really good for setting up picks. She lands that. Nocturne could just go ahead and dive on in. So maybe that's what they're thinking so far with these first two picks. So it'll be interesting to see what they pick with their last pick. Um, as we see the Seraphine! Oh, no. Let's Ryan, go! Ryan's excited. Ryan is excited. <laughs> Hey, Seraphine is one of my favorite champions, and it looks like we're going to be seeing Seraphine hopefully in the mid lane. I have seen a lot of people playing her in the bot lane as well as an AP carry in the bot lane, but I love her in the mid lane because as long as they're not going up against an assassin, you pretty much just play the lame game. You just chuck your Q, farm at your tower, and scale up, and then in the late game, you land your ult as you see the trundle locked in for the last pick for Conduit. Yeah, having Seraphine locked in with a bunch of strong frontliners is good. Obviously, the the Encore, her ultimate, gets extended whenever it hits a champion, whether it's an ally or a foe. So having, you know, people far up in front of you to extend it to get the entire, you know, the, the extended length of it to hit the entire enemy team, obviously really good. Um, and Nivea maybe going to lock it in here to give us an Ooh. ice theme here. We're going for, for a Frailyard deck, it looks like, on the side of IG. <laughs> And we see the Alawi band out too. Don't want that team fight threat. Yeah. So again, Alawi Squig putting him work on it in game one. So we see two champions from game one being banned out here: the Viagra and the Alawi. And there's the Galio we talked about. Whether it's Galio, TF, Shen, Galio is definitely something you don't want to deal with. Galio Ash can be very potent in the bot lane in terms of a combo. But then, of course, Galio being able to go in with the Nocturne, as we see Draven being the last band. So three of those champions being hit. Yeah, it did fairly well in the bottom lane. Conduit did with their aggressive lane. Didn't make too many plays, you know, like super aggressive, getting level one, level two kills or anything, but they didn't fall behind either, and they were able to, you know, mm -hmm. tr tr transition into the mid game fairly well. They roamed around the map really well together. So an Aatrox, a ban for Ooh. the last Conduit ban. Uh, IG has played it. I, I, There's another thing that I saw in the scouting report. Mm -hmm. uh, for top lane, a lot of a lot of bruiser fighter champions. Uh, we saw the Jarvan now uh, Aatrox. And there's a lot of set in uh, match history as well too. So I wouldn't be surprised mm. if we saw that. We are actually going for the Frail Yard deck here on the side of yeah. IG. So it's it's going to be a lot of CC. Brom is really good with you know a lot of auto attack champions. Obviously stacking up that those concussive blows. Nocturne and Ash can do that fairly well since they'll have fairly high attack speed this game. Stacking mm -hmm. that with the the Ash stun Ooh. and the Anivia stun, and we see an. Ari, interesting. 
yeah, so I guess that does mean that we are going to see Seraphine, Seraphine in that bot, inky yeah. carry role. So, yeah, like like I said, I personally like her mid, especially against Nivea, just because they both want to play lame, right? And Olivia basically just puts down her R, Seraphine basically just chucks out her Q and her empowered Q, and the waves are gone, right? So I would have liked to see that matchup, but Conduit decided to go with the AP carry bot. So what are they going to pick top lane here? Top and they go for catch. Thomas Prince! The Unbench the Kench. The top Kench. Really strong. <laughs> Did actually get nerfed this patch. It's, I believe, the the healing on his Q at early ranks is a little less. So that that's something that uh, they'll have to, to keep in mind. The sustain is not as strong as it used to be, but still a very good champion. Still, like, basically impossible to kill. But we're going to see the Mordekaiser matchup into it here. This is Ooh. not a matchup that I can say that I've seen a whole lot. Um... So that that'll be interesting. That's where my eyes will be, at least in the early game, to see this this Tom Kench Border Kaiser matchup. Two juggernauts. Um I'm interested to see in team in the team fight stage who Mordekaiser is gonna want to take into the cowboy zone with him. It's gonna be <laughs> Cowboy Zone, I love that. <laughs> oh, I guess that that is what my, my buddies and I refer to as ultimate as the cowboy zone or the shadow realm or whatever you want to call yo, it. Yep, shadow so, realm, yo, yo, yo. Um it but yeah, I think it'll be it'll be interesting because I don't know if you want to take Trundle or Tom Kench because it'll just be tanky and hard to kill. And right. Ari and Seraphine could kind of keep Mordekaiser away with, you know, Ari can dash around and charm and Seraphine is a bunch of slows and stuns and everything and, and all that too. So interested to see where that'll fit in. We have, it doesn't really fit the Freljord comp that I really wanted. I wanted to see like some Sejuani in here or something, maybe round it out. Ooh, that would have been cool. Because I'm a big Sejuani player in the jungle, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a soft spot for the pig. Um, right, so right. We see the team comps. We're going to load in the spectator delay for game two. Please stick around, listen to some beats, and we'll be back with Conduit Gaming versus e IG in just a bit.
All right, we are back again. Game number two here between Conduit Esports and Imperial Gaming. Conduit is up 1-0 so far in this series. And it looks like we might have a bit of a cheese. Ain't easy being cheesy. Well, he's going to show us how it's done right now. Yeah, looks like they're just waiting here in the brush. Let's see what happens. I feel like, by the looks of it, Conduit was anticipating maybe some level 1 shenanigans out of IG. Uh, Braum really good at level 1 with his passive, stacking those concussive blows on multiple enemies at the same time. You know, letting your, your teammates do the work by autoing them to finish the stun, but they decided not to, so they're kind of just going to gonna sit here and wait. Uh, Swaggy P on the Nocturne did run and drop a ward. You can see that by the, the Raptors pit there, so they're going to be able to see where Kappa Crusaders' start is. It looks like they're going to disperse, and Squig is going to waddle his way up to the top lane. And that's what I'm that's what I'm interested to see here in this early game, the Tom Kench versus the Mordekaiser, because it's not something that I'm super familiar with. Yeah, and I was also thinking about as we're loading onto the rift, the value of the Tom Kench pick actually being something that can help with the disengage as well, right? Being able to swallow up the Seraphine in case she gets dove on by the Nocturne is gonna be something that's gonna be really valuable. So I actually really like this Tom Kench pick. I wonder if they'll have enough damage. Of course, Trundle does do a lot. They have the Ari as well. Tom Kench can do a lot if he gets going. He can build full tank and do a ton of damage, but uh, we'll see where all the damage does come out for this comp. Yeah, that is, that is the one concern that I would say that I, I, I'm going to have on the surface level here just because, yeah, like you said, uh, that, Squig's a full tank. Um, genetics here on the Seraphine isn't like a true AD carry, hyper carry type champion, so his damage isn't like the best. Um, and Ari isn't like a full burst mage either, so we'll have to wait mm -hmm. and see. Squig here trading. Hard to fight the Mordekaiser in his passive. He's, he's going to do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> he W'd back in. Squig, what are you doing, homie? What are you doing? Takes a little bit of a bad trade there, but he's able to just chug up a potion. He does have the Doran shield. I'm sure he has revitalized as well. As we see Kappa Crusader coming up into the top lane. Gets Already the pillar three. down. Nice. Already level 3. As you said, Jabba, Tongue Lash comes out and Actual Bird actually has a flash in first blood. Kappa wow. Crusader picks it up with the Q. You love to see it. Yeah, it was really good timing on that gank, actually. It looked like he went, uh, if you look at the minimap, he went red, gromp, red, blue buff, gromp. So that's the early level 3. That's the fastest you can be up there and be level 3 with those three camps. So looks like Actual Bird wasn't, wasn't timing or wasn't anticipating that early of a gank out of Capra Crusader. Good on him to get get on to the Mordekaiser. Even when he, he hit the, the death's hand there to blow him, bring him into the tower, he's able to just walk his way out there. So really, really good timing. And I don't know if the, the early fighting with by Squig was a bit of a bait. Kind of mm, getting that W in. Maybe, maybe it was. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there, saying that he was actually super giga brain and not a bad trade. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's like I said at game one, with Squig, he does some questionable stuff, but this method, this method, I can't even speak because the fight's about to go out, but it's just a stun. It's a little bit choked out there from Azure Fire as Cap Crusader just shows his dominance, heads towards that bot crap, but what I was saying was that Squig, there's a method to his madness. He does some <laughs> things that has us scratching our head, there's a little bit of things that we're like, Squig, what are you doing? But it ends up working out every single damn time. Good on Squig to set up that kill. It was almost another one set up in the mid lane by Capra Crusade. It was like, I'm pretty sure like a max range charm there from JJH onto Azure Fire there. Good to flash away, but yeah, he's really, really good skill shot placement there. And Capra Crusader was there right on time. So if, if he didn't flash, it's at least the passive out of Azure Fire, getting putting him into that egg Nivea. He's going to not have that cooldown for the rest of this early game here. Nocturne. Done with his clear, has reset and got a pickaxe right away. Usually you get the the iron spike whip on junglers if you're gonna get that early just to help with your AoE for your clear, but mm -hmm. Swaggy P deciding for the pickaxe instead. I believe that means stride breaker still, and I feel like that makes sense yes. on Nocturne here. Both junglers meeting in the bot side for the crab. Kappa Crusader's already got it. Yeah, and he puts the fear down, and even though he has lethal temple, you can't really trade with a chunk with a trundle this early on into the game because of his Q being able to steal that attack damage, slowing you down, allows him to pretty much win every early trade against melee. So just gonna have to disengage their swaggy P as we see Cap Crusader going back to farm up his Krugs. Not a whole lot happening quite yet. 
Not really any CS lead anywhere either. Just the early. Yeah, both, both teams taking it slow, right, Jabba? They're just taking their time. I think for uh, Conduit, in terms of the Seraphine, I do wonder if she's going to go Leandri's or if she's going to go Moonstone Renewer, be a little bit more of a supportive build. I personally would like to see her go Leandri's this game or Ludens, uh, just so they have a little bit more damage in the game. But um, but yeah, I mean, for now, especially with Seraphine, like this is the type of game you want to play, right? Very Being very weak early on, you just want to play slow, just scale up. You know, you're going to have your advantage later on in the game. As we see Trundle... We see Kappa Crusader looking, as well as the engage from Ain't Easy being cheesy, and there's Kappa Crusader holding onto the pillar just in case, and they're able to get the kill. Ain't Easy being cheesy, <laughs> unfortunately, takes that one, but there's the pillar and forces out the flash from Rin. There's a look like the ignite from Ain't Easy being cheesy there, taking that one. Uh, both sums from Rin as well, and based in just the ignite from Ain't Easy being cheesy used on the side of Conduit. So another another very well timed gank from Capra Crusader, and good on uh, Ain't Easy being cheesy to to time his Leona engage well as the Trundles running in. And like you said early, didn't have to use the pillar to kind of you know get in a good position for the gank since it was set up so well, which meant he was able to use it later and uh, get the flash out of Rin. So good bot lane play transitions into Dragon Take. Uh, looks like they're going to reset after that. And it's, uh, it's another good early game setup so far by Conduit. Oh, I actually like that mechanic. As you see Squig eating the Mordgaz, eating Actual Bird, taking a couple tower shots. Actual Bird presses W and takes him into the Shadow Realm. It's time to fight as Squig actually flashes out. And here's Azure Fire trying to get a little bit cheeky. Not going to be able to hit the Q over the wall. Doesn't even attempt it. As you see Swaggy P also up here looking to take that top scuttle. Not quite level 6 yet, so we won't see a dive. It was a good fight, good turnaround back by actual bird, forcing Squig to flash there. Really hard to, to fight Mordekaiser in these long extended trades since he has that Conqueror and stacks it up very quick with his passive. Oh, oh nice no. engage as we see the stun come out on the side of Azure Fire. But as you called it, Jabba, R is just way too slippery. JJH is able to press R and get out of it, even though the Nocturne said darkness. He wasn't able to turn anybody's screen dark, that's for sure. That is for sure. Did have to use the flash, does JJH? So does they do get that cooldown out of him? They traded it for, for Swaggy P's flash. So I would say still a successful gank. You obviously you want your first Nocturne ultimate to you know get something out of it since it's a pretty long cooldown in the early game. But I think getting that early flash may potentially setting up for another play a little bit in the near future here. I, Paranoia is a long cooldown, but not as long as Flash, so they can maybe look to make right. another play in the mid lane. It was a good stun, just raw from Azure Fire on the Anivia to set that one up. Oh, and Crusader Azure Fire having no away. mana. Here comes the engage from Capital Crusader, just able to chunk him out a bit, delay his delay back. His back so yes. it's, yeah, it's gonna he's gonna have a really rough timing here as JJH is already back in lane now. As you see a little bit of fighting in the top lane here, Actual Bird going on to Squig. Squig actually paying support here. Now, are we going to see Capital Crusader go up? Yes, we are. Actual Bird trying to disengage here. He doesn't have shield available. He actually has to flash out as Squig gets a tongue lash, gets a stun. They're able to get the flash cooldown. So really good stuff. I love the sense of agency from Capital Crusader being all over the map and really letting his presence be known. Like all over the map. I think every time he's been in a lane, he's gotten a flash out of somebody. So he's <laughs> tallying that up on the chalkboard as a successful ganks in all three lanes now at this point. Um, falling a bit behind in CS, Kappa Crusader is, but th that's to be expected in this matchup. I feel like Nocturne just clears the jungle way faster, and he has that uh, that Iron Spike whip now, so even more AoE clear for the Nocturne. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, d down in CS, but up in things done on the map, I feel like. Does have a kill in and assist to his name, 100% KP, yes sir. And Fragging as well. <laughs> Fragging out, collecting flashes, doing yep. well oh. in this early game. Oh, and what a combo! The Solar Flare comes out, and Genetic starts to sing that beautiful tune as JJH comes down here, and How I Met Your Table tries to get a kill, actually flashes in, but not able to pick it up. Heal goes down as well as Rin is trying to run back to his tower, tries to juke this, doesn't matter. Exhaust comes out, so they're able to blow another summoner, and a really good roam, really good wave control from JJH to get down there. As we see Pillar coming up from Capital Crusader, as we see Wall coming up for Azir Fire, how's this gonna go? Just gets stunned up. He can get chunked here by the E. Electrocute comes out. Cap Crusader getting low. But he's going to be able to disengage from this. 
disengages. A good fight back from the Nivea here, but yeah, like you said, really good play in the bottom lane. Good roam from JJH. It was, it was a fairly heads-up play from Rin to jump in front of the Seraphine ultimate, so it would only hit him and didn't hit How I Met Your Table, but it ended mm -hmm. up not mattering, as you saw, How I Met Your Table. Still flashed and healed, I believe, and still uh, fell in the end. It's unfortunate ain't easy being cheesy. Got that one again, it looks like, so yeah. maybe Leona carry with the early Moby boots again. It looks, we'll see. If, I, I think he just picked those up. I'm not sure if he had those for that fight, so we'll see if he decides to roam out of base here. Looks like he's just going to run back mid, or back bottom, I'm sorry, because uh, this dragon is coming up in 45 seconds or so. So they're going to reallocate some resources down there. Squig is going to take it back and has teleport. If we take a look at the gold, he has about 1,400 in the pocket, so he's going to be close to finishing that mythic. Uh, decides to go for tier 2 boots. All right, so Squig... Nice. Takes the back, has the TP. Actual Bird does have it on the side of IG as well, so we could see a big fight for this second Drake. And by big fight, I mean Swaggy P, chilling in the B, looking to see. Ooh, okay, you got some bars there, Java. I see you. I see I'm you. gonna stop before everyone in Twitch chat cringes. Hey man, it, hey man, it was good. It was good. <laughs> hey, you know what, Java? I like that you know when to stop. You know, you yeah. you, you edited it right at the at the peak. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and I just want to say, I really do like the... Uh, 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 wow, I'm losing my words. I really do like the Mercury Treads uh, on the side of Squig, just because they do have a ton of CC. You're going to get a ton of value, whether you're getting hit by the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, whether you're getting slowed up or stunned by your fire, whether you're getting feared. So really, really good to be on the front line, um, as well as just having value in lane against the Mordekaiser. As, as your far actually has to blow flash, Lance is stunned, able to choke out Leona's paranoia comes out. Looks to the dive onto the Leona, fear coming out. Are they able to disengage? Good chunk from the Seraphine. No. That's my girl. I see you, Genetic, putting in work. And a three-man ult. You love to see it, but unfortunately going to fall to the Mordekaiser. Able to hit the three-man ult, but unfortunately in a choke and in a bad position and goes down. They're able to get the dragon, the second dragon, but they are going to trade one for one. It was really scary, though. Right before that play started, you saw Azure Fire walking from mid lane into the in the bush, and JJH on the R was lying in wait for him. So it was good on him to flash immediately, because if he didn't and that solar flare connected, that was just going to be a chain CC into death after the charm landed. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, Conduit getting the dragon good on uh, IG to trade one back. Uh, it, it was a really good ultimate from Genetics on the Seraphine, but the play was kind of just over at that point. The rest of his team had kind of backed up. So, yeah, there, there wasn't a whole lot of follow-up to come off of that amazing ultimate. We'll have to see if they're able to transition their their map presence into the next part of the game here. The gold is fairly even, Ooh. only about 300 or so, but Capra Crusader is looking to make his mark on this side of the on the jungle now, taking away this blue buff, getting more small leads for himself. <laughs> He's gonna give it to genetics, but instead took a bite out of it himself. So, <laughs> a bit unfortunate, but J junglers need blue buffs too. So I'm okay. Yeah, they do. They do. And I like to. I like to play. I like the chat play. They know that IG's bot lane back, so they're able to have that full pressure in the bot lane. Nocturne in the jungle by himself is three v one. He's gonna have to concede that blue buff. So they're able to pick it up and Jabba. Do you see what I see? I see a Leandries on the Seraphine. I'm okay. liking this. I'm liking the pickup. So not going for the Moonstone Renewer, not going for the supportive build. We were talking about where are they going to get that extra damage. And indeed, they do decide to make Seraphine more of a damage threat as Teleport comes out. Leona also in mid. So Zierfire not really going to be able to do much there. Not going to be able to do much. Is in the mid lane for a potential play. Uh, Nocturne Ultimate did come back up as of 20 seconds or so ago. Braum and Ash both have their ultimates as well, so they can maybe look to, to dogpile onto somebody, but Ain't Easy Being Cheesy's backed, and Genetics is totally fine to just sit and catch waves until the cows come home in the bot lane. Like you said, mm -hmm. has that Leandries literally, like, they can't get close to his tower without sending three or four people there. He has so much wave clear, and you can see he's, like, literally just going to sit there until the next wave shows up, so... Yeah, and that's why I like Seraphine, you know. She just lames out the game. You have to play her game. Again, unless she's facing an assassin, she literally could just sit back, farm it up, and this gives Ain't Easy Being Cheesy agency to try to make roams around the map, try to make plays around the map, and know that Genetics is going to be safe just catching waves, as you said. 
As you see, Easy Bean Cheesy dropping the Solar Flare, and there comes the ultimate from JJH, lands the charm, and there is the Egg Nivea. Who are they gonna give it to? And JJH, I seen him, I seen him save that R3 to get the last hit, I like it. As he's able to pick up the kill and the Rift Herald being dropped here, and they go they're gonna be able to open up mid and take first tower. Yeah, Braum is on the way here to try and just make sure this only gets one charge, which it will. They're gonna try and kill it right after that to make sure it doesn't get the tier two as well. So a yeah, really good CC stacking there from the side of Conduit. Um, Capra Crusader just there at the end to, to take a bite or so, eat his omelet. So oh, some genetics here. I like it, but here comes the paranoia and there's the darkness. He puts the fear onto the Leona, but not being able to get much there as the Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to have to come out. So they're investing a lot of ults, but this Leona is just so tanky. It's going to take so much, but the teleport actually gets canceled. It looks like Squid tried to TP and Actual Bird using his E to stop the Tom Kench from coming in. And unfortunately, they're not able to actually get any return kills. But that Leona was so damn tanky, yeah. living forever. It took so long to kill uh, Ain't Easy Being Cheesy there. That's actually the second Nocturne Ultimate in a row used to jump onto the Leona. So there it worked, like, technically. Uh, the one previous was the one right after the Dragon Fight, and it did not work. So I mm -hmm. I want to see the, the priority of, of targets in fights, you know, be, be a little better out of the side of IG here, Swaggy P, going onto the Leona twice. And she, she's only going to get more tanky and more tanky and have more stuns as, as the cooldowns on her abilities get shorter. So... Uh, it, it's going to be hard to get onto genetics just because as soon as you like land on top of them, if you don't time your spell shield correctly, you're going to get uh, Seraphine ultied. But yeah, going on the, the Leona, not the best uh, for team fights. They and like you said, they use so many ultimates to kill. Ain't easy being cheesy there, and it still took forever. And it, it actually it probably would have been worse for IG if the TP would have came oh. through. But it looks like a pick is going to come up, but Capital Crusader being Capital Crusader, doing what he does and just chatting it up, walking directly into them, showing them that this is his territory. As he puts on his terrain, gets his speed up, they're able to clear out the ward. Good idea from IG, just unable to capitalize on it, unfortunately. Yeah, good idea to try and get a pick right before this dragon spawned. It just came up right now. It is up now, so all 10 players here oh. near the dragon pit. It's a good pillar. Oh, what a root! The slow gets hit into the root, and we see 8 easy being cheesy, trying to look for an angle, trying to look in, and Genetics is just able to get out spells. Nobody focusing as the Paranoia comes out. Paranoia looking to dive in. Swaggy P actually getting absolutely chunked out as Azure Fire takes out 8 easy being cheesy. JJH able to take down Swaggy P and Rin, ticking, 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 falls to the Ignite, and oh my gosh, look at our boy Squig absolutely chunking, absolutely stunning, and it's... It's a three. No, sorry. It's a one for five. A complete ace. And Conduit is able to take their third dragon. Absolutely wrecked is IG. It's a really good team fight. He was kind of all over the place for a long time, but once Squig was able to... to waited out he got that that last minute two man w that abyssal dive or whatever the heck it's called now yep, yep, abyssal uh, dive, yep, yep. getting that last moment cc on the last two members how i'm at your table and rin uh and like you said during that fight genetics was able to just sit in the back throw out spells mm -hmm. one one and seven just getting his assists on deck now it's a yeah, lot of money and... in the pockets of the conduit and it's, it's thanks to the front line, right? It's the Trundle, it's the Leona. They're just in there, in their face, as well as Squig on the Tom Kench. Nobody's really focusing genetics. He's literally just back there chunking his spells, getting his notes, pumping out the DPS, and that Leandris is just continuing to burn. We've seen the Leandris ticking on Rin. That with the Ignite, it basically just kept him out of the fight. And Swaggy P did try to dive in, but again, his target control, I didn't really see him try to go on to the Seraphine. And keep in mind, Seraphine actually didn't ult that fight. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they won that fight without Seraphine ult. So, <laughs> I mean, if they're able to win, only lose one member and ace them, if Seraphine does ult, then, mm -hmm. my goodness, th this game's going to be over in a, in a quick one. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, Seraphine didn't have ultimate ready. He was coming off of cooldown when that fight happened. And yeah, uh, third uh, Nocturne ultimate in a row that hasn't really been used the greatest. Uh, I believe it went on to... It was either Capra Crusader or Squig, I don't remember exactly, but it, it, it was a frontliner and not one of the carries yes. that he went on to. Uh, you saw he, he used that paranoia and then immediately flashed out, actually, because he, he didn't yes. think he was going to be able to get the kill and then died anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, Conduit now in a, in a commanding lead, similar to game one, uh, kill lead, gold lead, dragon lead. Um, JJH is 
yet to die. S same with Squig and Capra Crusader, actually. So doing yeah. well across the map, doing a lot of things in the early game, and now transitioning that into a very strong mid game where they have Dragon Control and a lot of Baron around Vision. I'm sorry, <laughs> a lot of Vision around <laughs> Baron right now actually have two Pink Wards as well as the Scuttle Crab. So I don't think they can go for it this early because they don't like they don't have the much sustained like Baron damage. Oh, and look at this snipe as Seraphine oh sings goodness. her song and is able to pick up the kill. Good stuff, genetics. Good stuff. A little bit of alcove gaming coming out of conduit here. I don't. I didn't see how long Capra Crusader and Genetics were sitting there for, but they they typed worth an all chat after that. Just <laughs> get, getting the pick, he was actually pretty close to missing whiffing on the Seraphine ultimate because of the range. But so actual bird so trying to fighting. fight Squig here. I'm not sure if he actually wins that. As you see, Capra Crusader trying to pressure that bot lane tower. Are they going to look for a dive? JJ Agent, Azure Fire, training it out in the mid lane. We're seeing fights everywhere. It looks like they're able to pick up that bot tower by pressuring it. Squig uses the Abyssal Dive, goes on to Actual Bird here, so has a ton of Grey Health. He's going to be able to regen that back up, so he's not too worried. Not too worried. Just looking to clear the wave there, it looked like he's trying to make sure that Actual Bird can't get the, the top lane tower as his team was oh. training away the bottom, but it's a good stun. Very unfortunate, and once again, Swaggy P ulting onto the Leona, but not going to do much. Swaggy P, fourth ultimate that doesn't really amount to anything, getting chunked out, and there it is, Solar Flare, Captain Crusader gonna be able to pick it up, and Genetics actually is the one that takes it. You know I love to see Seraphine pop off, and that is what Genetics is doing. And again, job of Swaggy P, like, I'm not sure. Like maybe he thought. Of course he did. He wasn't able to really see them. I mean they do have the crab, so they do have vision there. They should have been able to see them coming up. But again, using the ultimate on a frontliner, not really getting anything out of it. As ain't easy being cheesy. Getting taken to the shadow realm here, very tanky. But getting that isolating crit damage. Oh, but the stun and able to live actually pulls in genetics. Flashes out from the brom and they live. They live. Genetics does have to use both of his summoner spells there, so. And he's being cheesy, able to survive, able to get away from the Mordekaiser. Uh, not going to have those those two important cooldowns for the dragon fight coming up in 50 seconds or so. I'm not quite sure what the Seraphine ultimate timer is. It looks like she will have it up for the fight. Um, oh yeah, this is going to be a very important fight here. Like like the like game one, uh, Conduit is on soul point again, even earlier this time, if I do recall. Um, and it's infernal soul this game. We we didn't even mention so. Trying to see if we can get a pick here before the dragon fight, because IG needs to make a play and it needs to be before this Drake. Yeah, and they land the stun onto Cap Crusader, but it's not gonna amount to much. And an instant flash comes out, a solar flare also comes out, and they get complete control of this river once again. They're here to clear out vision. I'm not sure how exactly IG is gonna fight against this. They're gonna have to dive into the back line, but Tom Kinch will be able to peel for genetics. So I think that Azure Fire is gonna have to get a really nice wall here and land a Q to get a pick. Because outside of that, I don't think they can just straight up 5v5 them. I don't think they can. If you just take a quick look at all the items for both teams, it's it's a real big item gap here. Oh my gosh! Gets the egg, instantly pops the Anivia, is JJH, and there goes Ain't Easy being cheesy, and there goes Genetics landing the full ult! Oh my goodness, that was disgusting! Swaggy P trying to get away, Swaggy P tries to blast Cone, but there's Squig, our boy Squig, doing what he does, and picks up Swaggy P with the Tongue Lash, and it looks like they're going to be able to take the Dragon Soul. Squig doing what he does best, licking people to death. Yo, somebody get my boy Jabba a record deal, all right? Somebody <laughs> needs to get him a record deal because this guy's just spitting hot fire, all right? And he's not playing Shivana, you feel me? I'm not a Shivana player, but anyway, <laughs> you see there Kappa Crusader picking up the Infernal Soul. If the game wasn't already hard, it sure is now. They're going to look to... To siege this tier two in the mid lane. Minion wave not quite here yet, but Squig has three health bars, so should be able to tank this one up before the next wave gets here. They actually they should just get the tower before the minion wave gets there, so a lot of money sitting on the side of Conduit right now. If we look at the difference in the gold lead right now, Squig is up twelve hundred gold, Kappa Crusader's up fourteen hundred. It's 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 basically a thousand gold lead in every single roll across the board for Conduit. Uh All's left but the singing here for this one, it looks like. It's a very, very big lead here, 24 and a half minutes in. Baron's the next thing on the table, so I would expect them to head in that general direction. But we'll have to wait and see what their priorities are. Yeah, and in that last team fight job, everybody played exceptionally well, right? The pillar was very well placed in that, cho in that choke in the yeah, river in between the grump. 
Yup, and then Genetics able to hit the three-man ulti. We've seen A-Easy being cheesy, getting the Zenith Blade over the wall. And how about JJH as well, landing the charm, able to burst Azure Fire, and able to get him into the egg state very early, allowing them to pick up a really good fight there. And then, of course, Squig diving into the back line and just absolutely chucking, absolutely peeling and being a menace. All five of them playing extremely well right now. And they're continuing to do so here. You can see Conduit, again, in the enemy jungle, placing wards literally four pixels away from each other just because they have the economy to do so. Oh. They have so much vision, they have so much control of the map, and so much gold um, that they're starting up the Baron. Ten alive here. They're going to be a little bit late to respond, but the Baron isn't... The DPS isn't as high, but oh. JJH is a god. Oh my gosh, JJH, absolutely disgusting. Defensive paranoia has to go out just so they ha don't have vision. And it looks like they're going to pick up the bear in here, Jabba. Yeah, it's really good on JJH to sit and zone away. He happened to find Swaggy P, the jungler, so obviously he's going to try and go for a all-in trade there because if Swaggy P dies, then there's a 0% chance that they get that they, they get to steal that Baron. So good on him to, to play, play goalie there, keeping the enemy team away. And... It, it, it's going to be even harder now. Oh, uh, Infernal Soul, Baron buff, and a, a really big gold lead here for Conduit. It looks like they're going to set their eyes on top lane outer while JJH split pushes in the mid lane. Oh, and just look at this tower getting absolutely chunked. It's already gone. They're just going to be able to continue that push. And I just want to once again shout out JJH. They're actually flashing the Ash Arrow. The Paranoid True. came out. If that Ash Arrow actually lands... Maybe we see Swaggy P turn and actually engage. It's a really good mechanics on the side of JJH as they just continue to let the minions, double ca double cannon minions, barrened up, do their damage to this top lane tower. And they're they're sending Ash to defend against JJH in the mid lane. And if you look at the item difference for JJH versus uh, how I met your table there, how I met your table went uh, wit's end first, which is good. It's good into the double AP threats of Conduit, but. But uh, two fully completed items, including a mythic on JJH's side. If the Ash gets hit by any spell, she basically has to leave the tower to die. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, and it looks like he actually went. Uh, uh, I believe I forgot what that item oh, called. Horizon Focus. Horizon Focus. Yes. Yeah, because he does get the amplified damage from hitting his charm, and that mm -hmm. actually stacks with the Horizon Focus. Because if the enemy has been CC'd, you get extra damage as well. So it's perfect synergy. Love it. I, I usually like if you're gonna go a needlessly large rod item, I like the hat a little better, but do see a fight after the tower falls. Yeah, Squig diving it. in and charm from JJH chunking out actual bird all the way to half, and they're able to take the top inhib and they were able to take the mid inhib. Double inhibs down now, they have complete control of the map. I don't know how IG can come back from this job. Yeah, it's gonna be very hard. They're they're looking to they get the two in heads, they're looking to reset, spend all that money, and you saw the pings going down onto the Elder Dragon. We have about a little over a minute and a half until that one, but uh Conduit would most likely want to be in the bot lane area anyway, since they have the two other inhibitors. So a lot of really good map movements. They they spent a lot of vision earlier in the game getting that the Baron vision. And since it's gone now, obviously they can rotate all their wards into the opposite side of the jungle now. Uh, make it hard for IG to both one defend their bot lane tower and then also make it hard to, to walk towards the dragon pit if we get towards the elder dragon fight so I, I I could see there's a world where this this game ends before a dragon an elder dragon fight even happens if conduit are quick to get to the bottom lane and push it out here um, they're gonna have a, a advantage in the numbers fight I believe since uh, IG is gonna have to have people in the top and mid lane you know defending those inhibitors obviously so we'll wait and see here we go they're gonna put down all the vision like we said before a little less than a minute here for the dragon it looks like we're gonna have a defense of the bot lane I, I was just looking it's almost 30 minutes in Jabba and how I met your table does not have a mythic as <laughs> Anivia does have egg does get knocked up and looks like able to disengage the pull in from Mordkaiser, and they're able to get one for one. Genetics able to pick up the kill on the backside. There is a dive onto Genetics. Genetics trying to get away, but there we go. We see a proper ultimate from Swaggy P. Diving onto Genetics and able to pick up the kill. The Abyssal dive. We see Squig also about to fall here. The gray health. Is he going to be able to live? Oh my god, look at that shield. He's almost dead. The W comes out. Actually looking at Swaggy P. Tongue Lash just whips. Ain't easy being cheesy. Hits the Zenith Blade. Hits a stun. And there's a tongue. And they're able to salvage it. For a second there, I'm not going to lie, they had me in the first half. Thought IG was going to make a comeback, but now they're going to have to defend the base. 
Valiant effort though, I respect it. Not just laying down and just taking the pounding, actually trying to fight back, but now it looks like IG is gonna have to stay in base while Conduit picks up the Elder. Yeah, it was it, it was kind of a bait because the fight looked really good for IG until you realize that the fight was 4v5 and Cap Crusader was just taking Nexus Towers. So right, right. If, if that fight would have gone any longer, then Cap Crusader probably just wins the game on the Trundle. You know, you can just take bites out of buildings because that makes sense, right? So... <laughs> It, 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 I mean, like, technically, yes, um, IG win the fight there, but then they lose two Nexus Towers and lose the Elder Dragon anyway, so it obviously could have been a lot worse. They could have straight up lost, but mm -hmm. still very dire, very very scary situation here for for IG. They, they can't fight, and they also have no Nexus Towers, so it's... Yeah. The game's going to end in the next five minutes, probably three, if I were to I would guess... Uh, all uh, Conduit has to do is just walk anywhere and win a fight and they win the game, so. Is... So Jabba, I want to ask you, who's your MVP so far for this game too? I mean, everybody's playing so well, so I don't want to put you on the spot and kind of make it hard for you, but I'm kind of doing it anyway. For me, it has to be Squig. It started in that top lane where we were scratching our heads with that engage, and since then he's just been able to really snowball his lead, 5-0 and 6 here, and just being an absolute menace on the front line. Squig is doing very well this game, obviously. 506 hasn't died. Um, just being an all around team player, playing tanks is hard, and I don't care what anybody says. And he's making a lot of good fights, good decisions in team fights, knowing when to go in, when to peel back, where, when to be in the front line, kind of holding up members of IG to make sure they can't get onto the back line. Um, so, yeah, I, I always like giving my, my MVP votes to the. The frontliners, just because it, it's hard to know what to do sometimes. The squig is doing a, a fabulous job, and uh, so is Cabot Crusader. He wasn't even in that yeah. last team fight. He just like killed four structures and almost won the game. So. Oh, but there's a paranoia diving into the back end, but instantly gets charmed up from JJH. They're able to still take him down. Genetics does go down, but they're able to get him with the elder. And oh my gosh, another amazing charm. JJH just absolutely popping off. We're giving so much credit, credit to Squig. But JJH absolutely doing insane as well. And it looks like Capital Crusade is just going to end the game. And it goes 2-0 for Conduit. They're able to win the first game in the league. Blue Otter League Week 1 goes to Conduit Esports. Very well done in both games, I will say. Highlights for me that I saw out of the team. Great vision control. Great map awareness. Great team rotations. Um, and really good drafts in both games too, I think. They had a really good mm. team fighting comp. Uh, yeah, shout outs to Data, man. Yeah, he knows what he's doing over there. Shout outs to the, the coaching staff and the the draft mastermind. Uh, really good team. <laughs> really good picks. S some meta picks. Some things we haven't seen before. Uh, the Jarvan top lane, I, I think, was on the enemy team, actually. So uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all around great play from everybody. Uh, a lot of damage done by... Wow. Uh, Leaving by... the damage from Squig. Like... <laughs> yeah, actually, he's, he's full tank and out-damaging three members of the of the other team, so... I, and I, mean, I like... kind of gave... I gave credit to everybody, but again, Cap Crusader, also we have to point out uh, that early gank, right? Um, being able to just do those three camps and just instantly transitioning to top. Actual Bird wasn't expecting it, and they were able to just get that first blood and carry it over from there. Yeah, just so right again, there. we always talk about butterfly effect, right? And I think that's that actually set the tone for the game. Yeah, I, I completely agree. He was able to get a flash, uh, and then he just transitioned it into basically every other lane and, and just like cultivated flashes. He could hold a flash in, in on every finger pretty much in the early game. Did very well. His pathing was great, and he mm -hmm. he knew he knew when to take the losses in the matchup that he was in because like we mentioned early in the game he was down like 20 cs to the nocturne like yeah four or five but it didn't matter so, but it didn't matter because he was getting his team ahead he was getting summoner, summoner spell and numbers advantages and obviously they got they got dragon soul and they started stacking it early because that game was only 32 minutes long so not the yeah, longest game yeah. and they still had that soul and were able to get an elder so Really good early plays, snowballing into the mid game, into the late game, being everywhere on the map, and yeah, it's really good all around play. Only seven deaths, both Squig and Kappa Crusader not dying in the entire game. So they, yeah. I don't know if you want to call them KDA players, but they were just doing well <laughs> <laughs> throughout the whole game too. Kappa Crusader killing four structures in that last, in one of that those last team fights. So 
that just like told if you didn't know at that point when ig barely won a 4v5 and lost their entire base you, you, mm-hmm. you knew it was pretty much over that they had done their job <laughs> all they had to do is uh cross the i's dot the t's if you know what i mean exactly and it is what it is and it's a win for conduit they win 2-0 pretty dominating performance pretty convincing performance and they're able to go up to 1-0 on the season amazing stuff job it's been a blast to cast with you today game one in the books looking forward to game two next week and with that being said it looks like we are going to be wrapping it up guys thank you so much for tuning in and we will be seeing you next week stay tuned we'll be here next week same time, same place. Make sure you follow Conduit Esports here on Twitch so you can get those notifications for when they go live. Uh, follow them on Twitter as well. And you can also, if you scroll down in the stream, you can see Ryan and I, our Twitters are on there too. If you'd like, we'd appreciate it. We're going to be posting when, when the stream is live as well. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any more Blue Otter League and Conduit Gaming action, be sure to do those things. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace.